Welcome to AgriTalk and thank you for keeping it Katie and Farmers TV. Today on AgriTalk we will be talking about poultry diseases and with me in studio today is uh, Dr. Paul Kangede, our in-house um, go-to person when it comes to uh, matters animals. Uh, welcome to the show Dr. Kangede. Thank you so much Kitana. Um, let's start by you telling us um, what are some of the causes of poultry diseases? Uh, even before you, we, we go to the causes, Keitani, allow me to ju just give a background on to what we are going to discuss okay. today. Yeah, majority of the farmers encounter diseases <coughs> and most of the times they even don't know what killed their chicken. They just see them dropping dead or they see a drop in production. They see a change in how the, the, the chicken eat. And so they are, not, they are not sure exactly what uh, is happening to their chicken or what happened to their chicken in case they die. Mm -hmm. But today we're going to, to have uh, that discussion. Mm -hmm. and, and now back to the question you asked, what are some of the causes of um, poultry diseases? Is that diseases are caused by many organisms, so to say. That is both in animals and in humans. Mm -hmm. Now for, for our sake today in, in animals, there are those uh, organisms that specifically cause diseases and, and they include one, viruses, they include number two, bacteria, then fungi, then uh, protozoa, and worms. Yes, okay. those are the most common causes of uh, poultry diseases. And which, one, which ones are more lethal? Uh, the ones that are, all of them cause diseases, but the ones that are more lethal, uh, we, if we would arrange them in, in um, how lethal they are, Mm -hmm. It would be viruses, then bacteria, then fungi, then protozoa, in that order. Okay. Yes. Now, um, if, we, if you can give us examples of some of the diseases that are common uh, within our borders when it comes to poultry farming. Uh, some of the most notorious diseases that, that uh, we encounter here in Kenya and in East Africa in general, we have uh, Newcastle I is one of them. Mm -hmm. Then we have Fallpox as well as uh, sal salmonellosis and then uh, coccidiosis. Okay. Uh, and uh, Newcastle and the fallpox are caused by yeah, viruses. And then uh, salmonellosis is caused by bacteria. Mm -hmm. And then coccidiosis is caused by uh, protozoa. Okay. Yes. I think we should uh, tackle these diseases one by one. Yes. Let's start by looking at um, the Newcastle disease. Um, why is it even called the Newcastle disease in the first place? Uh, it's called Newcastle because uh, it originated from uh, a, a, a town or a city in the United Kingdom Newcastle. called uh, Newcastle. Yeah, so it got its name from there since that is the place where it was first identified. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. So now it it got that name, and then it is uh, called that way across the world. Okay. But uh, different communities have their local names for that. For example, in our community, we call it, uh, from, from central region, we call it Kehuruto. Mm -hmm. I don't know what in Nift Valley they, <laughs> they call that. Which one is the sleeping one? Uh, that's the, 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 the sleeping one. Oh, the one that you, yeah, you see your yes. chicken yeah. sleeping all the time? Yes. Well, that's the Newcastle disease. Mm -hmm. We also have a name. Ah, okay. So, but I can't <laughs> pronounce it. So, uh, let's right. go to the causes of, uh, of Newcastle disease. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, um, the disease is caused by a virus called Newcastle disease virus mm -hmm. or NCDV. Yes, it's a very lethal virus. Yes, that is found in um, uh, the surroundings where the, the chicken are. It is also found in aerosols, meaning if uh, uh, a sick chicken breeds into one that is not sick, the air, I mean, they can get it from the air as well as from, from uh, feces, water. If a sick one drinks some water, and then one that is not sick drinks the same, those, those viruses will be laden there. Okay. Again, if, if people, uh, you walk with your shoes into a chicken uh, house, and then you do not disinfect as you come out, you go to another place or another environment, you carry them within your cells, what is called formites. Okay. Yes, in your shoes, in your clothes, you will spread it to your jirani. Okay. Yes. So what are the symptoms? What do farmers need to look at? Uh, symptoms of uh, this disease include but are not limited to, you will hear your, your, your chicken sneezing. They also have rails uh, as if they are snoring, ki kind of snoring sound. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 
some of them start sleeping uh, as you as you had mentioned and then uh, others have uh, diarrhea greenish uh, whitish or greenish yellowish diarrhea mm -hmm. and then you will also notice uh, uh, they do not want to eat others start moving in circles what is called suckling and then uh, others also show signs of uh, a drop in egg production if they are areas and then uh, the mortality is also there okay. yes and the mortality is high you see maybe 40 or 30 percent mortality meaning because that's the it is spread very fast and mm -hmm. therefore the mortality is, is high as well yes. um okay now that you talk of mortality um what do pa uh, the farmers need to do when they realize uh, th these symptoms uh when, when a farmer realizes some of these symptoms that uh, we just mentioned, then what they are supposed to do is to isolate mm -hmm. the sick ones first. They isolate them uh, in a house that is far from the others. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they, they call in a vet mm -hmm. to ascertain that indeed this is a uh, uh, Newcastle that has affected my farm. And then they quarantine their farm to make sure that they are food birds because if your neighbor comes to uh, to witness the disease you are you are that is challenging you they go back to their poultry uh, houses they spread to their poultry so that those are the the food birds yes of course they are medicated and then uh, a postmortem can be done by the vet yes to ascertain indeed it is uh, this disease there are those things that the vet will be able to identify and see and then from there, uh, for the ones that are sick, for those which do not die, then they can be put on uh, multivitamins, yes. Mm -hmm. And if they have diarrhea or other uh, secondary infections, then they can be put on antibiotics, which, which will hasten the, the recovery process. Okay. Yes. Um, is there a way that farmers can prevent this even f uh, from getting there? Yes. Uh, as we always say in, in this forum, we always say that uh, prevention is, is better than cure. Because uh, from the mortalities we just mentioned of uh, 50 to 60, 70 percent, you can imagine if you had a thousand chicken or even more, you lose half of that. that that's a, a hefty blow to the farmer. If they were laying eggs, then they do not lay anymore. So you have lost a market or you've lost a, your source of income. And eventually when they die, now that becomes a double tragedy. So we always advise uh, farmers that there is a, a, a protocol, yes? We shall discuss that another day on how, depending on the number of days, how they are supposed to vaccinate. Because most, most diseases, as it were, mm -hmm. they have vaccines. And the vaccines, uh, if, if you allow me, uh, vaccines are just like teasers. We introduce uh, an antigen into that uh, organism, or we are telling it, someday you will encounter this thing, yes? So we are teasing them to help them produce what we call antibodies. And when they now encounter it uh, real time, they remember, oh, I encountered this. And since they have antibodies of protection in their body, then they are able to fight it with ease. But for those which are not vaccinated, then they come down with it. And uh, for, for Newcastle, then once the, the schedule is, is done from when they are chicks, then they, it's, it's a routine vaccination every three months, every three months, every three months, yes, so that you stay afloat on, on top of the game to make sure that there are no incidences of such. Even when neighbors are having those infections, then if you are, your chicken are fully vaccinated, meaning you are following the routines, mm -hmm. then you are sure to escape that uh, calamity. Okay. Yes. Is there also a, pro, uh, a protocol to follow when disposing uh, this dead um, uh, chicken? Yes, indeed, uh, that is very important because I if chicken that are sick, uh, they are left in the open, the ones that arrive may come pecking on them and they become infected. As well as those aerosols, they can also spread in the air and affect the, the neighboring chicken or, or in your farm. So the best way now to deal with that is to make sure that they are buried. Burying is, is the best alternative, very deep in the soil, say around six feet then that way they are sure uh, they are able to deal with that. Alternatively, they can bury in a, uh, I mean, they can burn in a crossed furnace, 
making sure that the aerosols are not spreading. And that's also an, another way to deal with it. But proper disposal is very key because failure to take care of, of the dead ones, they can still infect those that are alive and the farmer now encounters more losses. Okay. Yes. On, the, on, on, on uh, burying them, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't that also contaminate the area of where they've been buried? Uh, the, the, beauty, the, the beauty with that is that unlike uh, anthrax, which we mentioned in another forum, where the spores live in the soil, and when there are soil disturbances, then the spores become uh, activated and become infective, the virus dies after some time. And therefore, once you bury, there are no incidents that at the place where you buried, then they can be, be infected again. Okay. Yes. Now let's look at fallpox. Okay. Tell us a little bit about what fallpox is all about and what causes uh, this disease. Uh, thank you, Keitani, for that question. So fallpox is the other rampant disease um, in, in chicken in East Africa, uh, including Kenya. And um, it's, it's a disease that's caused by virus called uh, avipox virus, yes. Uh, this virus now infects, infects chicken and, and birds, I mean all birds, including the ones that are wild, uh, geese, pheasants, yes. Uh, uh, th th all those birds that are there, they, they are susceptible to this virus. So, so this virus now, there are two forms of, of how the, the virus shows. There is a wet form and there is a dry form. A dry form uh, shows uh, a pimple or a scab mm -hmm. that's usually dark on the parts of the body of the chicken that are not, that are not with so much feathers. So on the joints, you'll see on the legs, on the eyes, around the mouth. So you see some of those. Uh, for, the, for the wet form, uh, you see a yellow chanka. Yes, as if a yellow stuff around the mouth and the esophagus going mm -hmm. down. Yeah, and uh, again, it may include the eyes, meaning that you, your chicken may go partially blind or total blind, uh, blind, uh, blindness. And therefore, even feeding is affected. The growth rate is affected, and also the uh, movements to look for food and water is affected because since it is now blind, it cannot walk around. And since the digestive system is affected, therefore even feeding is affected. Uh, another important uh, thing to note about that disease is that uh, once uh, the chicken are affected, it is not as lethal as Newcastle. But majority of them, or a good number of them, will, will get it from pecking each other. Yes. So if a chicken pecks the other, then it becomes infective. But more rarely does it spread to neighboring farms because this cross contact. Only it spreads among the birds that are in cross contact. In, uh, in fact, if, if there are two houses adjacent to each other, but they are separated maybe by a wall or something. Birds in this uh, patch will not be affected, but this one will be affected only in the same encroachment where they are taking, uh, they, they have access to each other's body. Yes, so those are some of the signs uh, of, of how that disease comes about. And again, uh, this disease uh, can be prevented mm -hmm. by using vaccines. There are those vaccines, uh, just like Newcastle, there is a regimen or a, a a protocol. Uh, we shall discuss that uh, on how you as a farmer is supposed to do it since from the day they get the, 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 the chick from the hatchery up to the point now that uh, this one uh, comes up. But rarely does it affect chicken mm -hmm. and uh, Newcastle is the one that is uh, more rampant than this one, although okay. other farmers may encounter it in their farm. Um, I remember earlier on when you were talking about Newcastle you said it is easily uh, transferable, if I use that word, from a f one farm to another if um, we don't, um, what do we call? It's it, called uh, disinfecting Disinfecting, the yes, the, 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 the boots, boots and, or the hands. Yes. Can uh, fallpox also happen the same? No. The reason as to why that, that happens like that is that uh, Newcastle has the ability to be spread in the air. Oh, okay. And the viruses can spread on our clothes, but for these, uh, for, for fallpox, it is only for those chicken that are in close confinement. Okay. I mean, they spread among one another.
Okay. Yes. You talked about the vaccination. Maybe you can take us through that uh, vaccination and how long does it take? Uh, for, for, for this vaccination, the, the, the chick at around eight weeks for full pox, then uh, they are supposed to do what we call uh, a wing stab. Now, back a step, for the vaccination of uh, Newcastle, it's usually, the, vac the vaccine is usually put in water and then uh, they drink the chicken, drink that water. Usually, early in the morning, you give your chicken food, but you withdraw water. And then, around uh, seven in the morning or eight, you introduce water, yes, for, for, the, for the chicken. And then uh, this water should, uh, be, should not be chlorinated water. It can be borehole water, but uh, boiled and then let to cool down overnight so that it's cold in the morning. So that once you withdraw feed and then you just mix that water, there is a ratio on how uh, the vaccines you are supposed to mix. Okay. Then you give your chicken. It should, water be the, it should be an amount of water that they can finish in, in uh, say, about two hours. And they are usually in doses. There are 250 doses, 500, etc. So depending on the number of chicken you have, you buy that exact dose. If you have uh, uh, 500, then you buy for 500. If you have 300, you still buy the 500 dose because uh, there is no, uh, I mean, if, if there are say 200, you buy the 250 dose because that they will consume and finish and it will be sufficient for, for each of them. Again, in Newcastle, you can also do eye drops. You just uh, use a, a dropper into their eyes or their nostrils like that. But for full pox, mm -hmm. the vaccination is different. At around eight weeks, then you do, you mix the, the vaccine in water, and then uh, you do what is called a, a wing stab. A wing stab is um, the wing, you spread the wing, and then you just use a, a double, a double a forked uh, instrument mm -hmm. where you just stab the wing. That way, uh, that vaccination is good, and then uh, you don't have to do it again. It, it's usually a one. Okay. Yes. Um, you said this this one is not lethal. It, it's not lethal. What, what uh, happens is that uh, we have two words we use for them, mortality and morbidity. Mm -hmm. For mortality is the number of deaths that we accrue uh, following uh, a certain disease. Morbidity is how many animals will be affected mm -hmm. by, by that disease, but not necessarily them dying. So for, for Newcastle, the morbidity and mortality are high for Newcastle. The deaths are high, and also many are affected. For full pox, the morbidity is high, many are affected, but the mortality is low. I mean, the number of deaths are as compared to, uh, to Newcastle. Okay. Yes. Um, so, um, what do farmers need to do uh, to ensure that this thing is totally eliminated from their farm? Uh, when, when a farmer notices that their chicken have full pox, what we just mentioned, they see some yellow lesions in the mouth, some brightness, and then uh, the chicken is unable to, to feed, and then it has dropped its wings, mm -hmm. then they, they can be, uh, that can be suggestive of full pox. Now they isolate the sequence first. That is always routine. They isolate the sequence, or they quarantine the sequence, and then they call in a vet to tell them how uh, to come and confirm the cause of that disease. And then if that is the case, then there are some antibiotics that since the, the chicken are not feeding, there are some antibiotics that uh, the chicken can be put on and then multivitamins. Multivitamin is usually good because it just revives the systems and then stabilizes them to make sure that they even have some, some appetite, yes, like, like uh, appetizers or something, and then making them uh, a bit stronger so that once they pick or they overcome the, the disease, then they are able to move on very well. But, but the bottom line becomes vaccination, mm -hmm. which is very key. If, if, uh, for these two diseases, if uh, vaccination is followed uh, to, to, to date, or it is up to date, then very rarely will you find those diseases affecting okay. poultry farmers. For the two diseases, that yes. is New, Newcastle and um, uh, fallpox. Fall yes. uh, if someone decides to consume 
with the meter that, but um, either the dead ones when it comes to Newcastle and the infected one when it comes to uh, Fallbox. Uh, will it have an effect? Uh, thank you so much, Keitani, for that question. From a public health point of view, we always advise uh, farmers or consumers to only eat, consume meat from uh, animals that are healthy. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if they consume meat from a dead uh, chicken uh, that is that has died of Newcastle, there may not be much that will happen to them. But uh, what we are now seeing is a trend where organisms are being transferred from animals to humans and vice versa, what we call zoonosis. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, as at now, we do not have uh, statistics or data showing that these ones are zoonotic, but it would just be good not to consume uh, chicken from, from dead, from dead, uh, I mean, uh, not consume dead chickens, mm -hmm. yes, as it were. Either they died of a known cause or a cause that is not known to the farmer, because many are quick just to slaughter a very big jaw that starts ripping <laughs> because they say, I don't want to lose it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if something were, were to happen to them as a result of them consuming that, then they, they lose the jaw and they lose themselves. So <laughs> it's not worth it. Okay. Yes. Now, um, when it comes to um, losses for the farmer, economic losses, when uh, the farmer realizes either his chicken have, con have uh, uh, Newcastle or fallpox. Do they cut completely their production or they still lay eggs if they are laying eggs? Uh, for Newcastle, there is complete cessation of uh, laying or partial. Meaning, if uh, you had a thousand chicken and you are getting 800, 800 eggs from them, if the whole flock is affected, you can get uh, about 100 eggs or 300 eggs, meaning that the production has really dipped, mm -hmm. yes? Uh, and, and for these ones, of course, you can imagine uh, if they had an order from a hotel or a supermarket and now they cannot be able to give them at that time, that is a very big loss because they have lost income and they have lost a, an order that they had secured. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, the veterinary bills that they have to incur, yes, that is also another expense. Again, the, uh, from the time they are treated, they take time to recover. Because uh, today they could be very well, tomorrow they fall sick, and then they take two weeks to recover, yes? Meaning the, side, uh, the, the, the time taken from health to, sick, uh, to sickness is very fast, mm -hmm. but recovering from health to, I mean from sickness to health, then, then they take a bit stronger. Meaning that for, for that protracted period of time, they'll be losing. And, and uh, even when they are losing, they are still feeding because uh, not, not all of them fail to eat. Some still eat because they need to, to be alive. So, and they have to be uh, attended to, laborers and all that. So those are expenses from animals that are not producing. Okay. And uh, economically to a farmer, then that becomes a very big loss. Okay. Yes. Um, with that point, um, Dr. I think we need, it's a good place to take a short commercial break. Yeah. Also to allow our viewers to internalize the th some of the things you've talked about. Um, so we are taking a short commercial break. For those who are joining us today, we are talking about poultry diseases and how to pre what the causes and how to prevent them. We will be back uh, in a short while. Ever thought pigs are filthy animals? Well, think again. On Smart Pigs, we debunk this myth. And enlighten you on how you can mint money from pigs. From the nitty gritties of pig selection and breeding, proper feeding methods, maintaining pig health, to adding value to pig skin, hooves, and meat. We have it all covered. Tune in to Smart Pigs every Wednesday from 7 p.m. only on KTN Farmers TV. 
value your feedback and welcome any comments, queries or complaints regarding our programs. You can get in touch with us on SMS 22071. Call us on 0719-012-450. You can also send us a letter on our post office box 30080-00100 or deliver it to our offices at Standard Group Center, Mombasa Road, Nairobi. Welcome back and thank you for keeping it KTN Farmers TV. Today on AgriTalk, we're talking about poultry diseases. And with me in studio is Dr. Paul Kangete, who has been uh, giving us insights into some of these diseases, the causes, the, the, uh, the symptoms, the treatment, and even uh, disposal of uh, uh, dead uh, carcasses, especially for, for, for the chicken. Um, now we are going also to look, we've, we've looked at two, that is um, Newcastle and, and Fallpox. Now we are going to look at coccidiosis and uh, salmonella. So, Dr. Kangede, when we talk about coccidiosis, tell us what is it, what, is it, what are the causes, and what do farmers need to look at? Uh, thank you, Keitani, for, for that question. Um, as I had mentioned earlier in our introduction, <clears throat> I mentioned that um, there are around four causes of uh, poultry diseases, or diseases in general viruses, bacteria, uh, fungi, and uh, protozoa. So coccidiosis falls in the category of protozoa, among other, uh, among other diseases that, that uh, are members in that family. So uh, protozoa are very small organisms. Uh, they are microscopic. But uh, chicken consume them from, say, wastes, <coughs> uh, wastes of uh, wastes the droppings of chicken, so that is mostly how they, they contract them, meaning they can only get it from an infected one, as compared to the other disease where we said they can breathe uh, the viruses from the air or something like that. So for this case, uh, the coccidia, uh, they are caused by a subspecies called uh, Aimeria, mm. yes? And uh, Aimeria are usually many, and depending on the location of the digestive system which they affect, then they have different names. If I were to mention just a few, we have uh, Aimeria tenera, Aimeria necatrix, Aimeria mivati, yes? Those are some of the, of the uh, 
procedure that affect chicken. And so now, uh, the symptoms now that we accrue, since mostly they are in the digestive system, mm -hmm. you will see diarrhea, yes? So it could be watery diarrhea, yellowish diarrhea, or if they have punctured into the epithelia of the digestive system, then you'll have a bloody diarrhea, yes? Depending on whether they have affected the digestive system, the, the, I mean, the, the, the small intestines, the large intestines, or, or the uh, downside part. So diarrhea is the most uh, uh, key sign as, as uh, pertaining this disease. And mostly bloody diarrhea, when it progresses, then uh, you are sure that that is how it starts. But once it hits, then, you know, it's just in the, in the, in the rita. So all the chicken that are there, if they peck that, if they peck onto that rita, <laughs> then uh, you are sure that uh, they become uh, infected. So m mostly for those ones that um, chicken that are on free range, then they are high at high uh, chance of uh, contracting it because they just eat from outside. So they use their their eggs to just kuchakura um, mchanga. So in the process, because they feed in groups, they may come across it and, and then uh, they become infected. So that is uh, just a, a small uh, introduction or a brief about uh, coccidiosis. OK. Yes. How lethal is coccidiosis? Uh, it is lethal. But uh, compared to the, the other two that you mentioned, it is less lethal. Less lethal. So uh, Newcastle is the most lethal. Then uh, I would say fallpox and coccidiosis are in the same rate. But uh, coccidiosis could be more lethal than fallpox. OK. Yes. So what are some of the preventive measures farmers need to take? Uh, for preventive measures, then farmers need to deworm, yes, mm -hmm. because they're in the digestive system. They need to deworm just to kill those infective eggs. Uh, deworming is very key every two, three months. And then uh, once they deworm, they change the, the dawa that they used previously. So that, that means they should have a record uh, to make sure that last time they bought this product, this time they are using this, so next time they will use a different product or go back to the product they used initially. Another, <clears throat> another method that is very good in uh, controlling visa oxidiosis mm -hmm. is good rita management. Yes, because we, we have uh, uh, discussed that it's usually in the rita. Yes, so if they are able to dispose it well, uh, meaning they change the rita, that is number one, and then they dispose it where chicken cannot be able to access it. Mm -hmm. Then that becomes very central in, uh, in, uh, in that. And then monitoring water and feed sources, just to make sure that they are not infected. Yes. Okay. Yes. So they only infect chicken when they uh, exactly. consume... Uh, the oral route. Okay, yes. so it, it, it cannot transmit them by, um, as you said, they go and kick the the dust out there, in the litter or the dust bin, and carry the same with their legs? No, they cannot carry on their legs. So it cannot be they moved from one farm to another? Exactly. They only consume from their surrounding. Okay. In, into the mouth. One drops to the ground, another, uh, another swallows. So that is how they, they keep it in the, in the, in the, I mean, in the, in the homestead. So if, if a few hands eat litter from, uh, stuff from a particular point and the others don't so the others will not be affected that is true okay. because on uh, i mentioned that um when a sick one uh, drops their feces somewhere in the rita mm -hmm. then a healthy one pecks on those uh, feces from the rita that is the only way they can get uh, infected so another one in the same compound that did not peck that rita or that point in the rita will not be affected. Okay. Yes. So that also means when it comes to economic losses, they are not that huge? They are not that huge. Now, mm -hmm. compared to the other three that we just, uh, compared to the other two that we, that we mentioned, then the economic losses for coccidiosis are lower. Mm -hmm. But because they affect the digestive system and there is diarrhea, diarrhea comes with uh, uh, inappetence, or what we call uh, the uh, low appetite, or subsized appetite. 
me and if they do not feed they cannot grow fast and mm -hmm. they cannot produce eggs as 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 though they were normal yes so the roses would be equally or nearly the, those of uh, fall pox but uh, for for Newcastle then are the highest oh, okay yes so I'll, I'll continue asking you this question yes. um, for these infected ones can we still consume them uh, okay I want to reiterate by, by saying that from a public health point of view <laughs> We should always consume meat from animals that are healthy. Okay. Yes. So we should not, um, if they just fall dead and we just don't know what, if, are they caused by fallpox or are they caused by coccidiosis, we should not consume meat from them. Okay. Yes. But you said it affects um, the intestines. Yes. So if I'm sure it has been, it has died of coccidiosis. I slaughter it, throw away the intestines. Will the meat still be <laughs> safe to eat? Ah, okay. <laughs> the, the meat may not be safe to eat because, um, as we say, from uh, a public health point of view, again, since the integrity of the intestines has been affected mm -hmm. by the coccidia, there is high likelihood that the normal bacteria that reside in the intestines mm -hmm. can get access into the body. So we may consume bacteria, even if we throw away the intestines, we may still consume bacteria in there and, and toxins from the bacteria in the chicken's body, even after we have thrown away the, the intestine. So it's always proper and, and ethical not to eat meat from, from uh, infected chicken, as well as not selling, because you may say, Okay, for me, I'll not consume, but uh, I'll slaughter, package very well, and sell to someone else. Of course, that is uh, unethical, and it's not even good for business. Because, uh, as they say, as a good book says, for that which you would not want to be done, do not do it on your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, um, when it comes to the, the dead carcass, um, I didn't even ask you this for the fallpox. Is the disposal process the same? The, the one with the w with with the one that dies from um, Newcastle, fallpox, and now coccidiosis. Yes, the the disposal uh, for for dead animals is is usually the same, uh, but for 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 the ones that have died as a result of fallpox and uh, coccidiosis, burying is enough because those organisms, if you bury six feet deep, then you are good to go. Tentatively, you can incinerate. Of course, always in a crossed uh, furnace, mm -hmm. and then they just become ashes. And that's a very good way, especially if you realize they just died, you isolated them and died, you just make sure that you bury them very fast. Okay. Yes. And then just to secure the others that are alive. Okay. Yes. Is it prudent that every time my chicken falls dead, I call a, uh, a vet or it's not important, I just dispose it? If I am suspecting, I know what caused the death. Uh, sometimes, other diseases present with similar signs. Uh, the same in human beings, you may go to a hospital, they tell you it is typhoid, and at that time it is malaria, or they confuse the two. So similarly, in, in uh, animal diseases, you may confuse between two diseases. And you may not say, the same, same. It may not be the same. They may be presenting with the same signs, mm -hmm. but upon a post-mortem uh, exam by a vet, then you find out Kumbe it was a different, uh, a dif a different uh, organism. They even take samples to the laboratory for bacteriology and virology tests to make sure or to rule out certain bacteria or certain viruses, and then they come out with the exact cause, and then they advise you on, on the best course of action. So it is prudent. Uh, it is affordable. Mm -hmm. But again, we, we talked about economies of scale. Uh, if you have many, once you know what uh, killed a few, you'd know how to protect the others. But if you have a few, then again, it may be economically challenging for the farmer. Oh, okay. Yes. Now let's look at uh, the last one, Salmonella. Um, tell us a little bit about Salmonella, the causes, 
and what farmers need to look at us in terms of symptoms? Uh, for Salmonella, we have um, two bacteria that cause that, uh, Salmonella typhi and Salmonella paratyphi. So these ones, mostly Salmonella affects the sick animals, yes, including uh, cow, sheep, pigs. It's, it's, a common, it's a common infection because these are bacteria that uh, mostly get into the digestive system of the, of, the, of the animal, that is the chicken, and then they, mostly, they usually have white diarrhea because then uh, the digestive system is affected. And for chicks, then this becomes very uh, critical when they are sick because their immunity, one, is not developed, yes? So if they now fall sick, majority of them even die. You just see a white dropping and they are dead. So that, that's, a, that's usually the number one killer in the chicks, yes? Those are maybe less than three weeks old, two weeks old, yes? When they are still in the brood. So that becomes a very serious one. And, and of course it comes from hygiene. Uh, and you can introduce these bacteria even with your hands <clears throat> from uh, if you have, ca say, cows or, and pigs and other animals. If you just go and handle their feces using, uh, I mean, uh, on hands that are just uh, not covered, then you do not uh, wash your hands and come and handle chicken. You, you, tr you transmit the, the bacteria to them. Okay. So these bacteria then... Uh, becomes lethal because uh, your chicks will, your small chicks will die. Alternatively, their growth will become retarded, and therefore uh, you are not able to have a growing stock or a stock to replace the ones that are already there. So it's a, a disease that is that farmers should be wary of, mm -hmm. and uh, of course hygiene becomes very central. Keep your chicks dry in a dry place, meaning where their feet are. And once the, the litter becomes slightly wet, you just change that. Because uh, apart from even those bacteria, even accumulation of ammonia can become stressful to the chicken. So they do not want any, I mean to the chicks, they do not want any stress. As well as the variations in temperatures or anything, you just keep them comfortable. Okay. To make sure that their immune system is competent enough to handle any attack from, from uh, the bacteria or the viruses. Okay. Yes. Have you talked about the, the symptoms uh, that the farmers need to look at? For, for the symptoms, the farmers will see uh, chicks that do not want to feed. <clears throat> they do not even want to take water. And then uh, they also see uh, yellowish diarrhea uh, on the backside of the, of the chick. Most, mostly they are, they are usually chicks that are affected. So once they see that, and uh, or, or white droppings on the on the where chicks are are, are staying, then they, they should think that very fast. And, and some that are just do not even want to walk or are unable to walk. They are just secluding themselves. As the others go around roaming in the in the in the chicks' house, then these ones are just secluded somewhere. They do not walk. They are weak, or they are just lying on their side. So then they know that uh, there is an issue here, then they call in a vet to come and know how best to go about that. Okay. Yes. O also take us through the, tre the treatment process. Uh, for the <coughs> treatment process, since uh, salmonerosis is a, is a bacterial disease, <coughs> then uh, the, the, the vet then can advise on the best um, antibiotic to use. Yes. And therefore they are put on a a regimen of antibiotics and multivitamins for five days and making sure that um, <clears throat> sometimes the water even is uh, the yeah it is advisable to even add glucose mm -hmm. and some um, uh, what is that some liquid paraffin just to ease the the process of uh, <clears throat> the cheek eliminating waste from from its body and then they are kept warm to make sure that they are not stressed anymore. Then that way it's, it's easier for them to recover. Okay. Some fully recover, but also the mortalities could be near a, around 30% or even more. And okay. that is why it's important to make sure that they are protected or prevented from, from becoming sick. Okay. Yes. Um, 
for the trichoxidosis and salmonella, is there a vaccine um, to help prevent these diseases? Uh, for salmonellosis, uh, there is not a vaccine as at now. But for coccidiosis, if you routinely deworm your chicken, deworming meaning it will get rid of the coccidia and the, and the, and the worms. Mm -hmm. That will mean that you do not have even eggs of, of these coccidia or worms that they can consume, and therefore your frog is green. So if they are not shedding into the environment, then there is nothing to be taken in by those ones that are healthy, and therefore you are good to go. Okay. Yes. So salmonella can be transferred from one farm to another. That is very true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you uh, if you uh, go to if you go to one farm uh, with herds that are not clean, then you go and handle chicks from another place. Then that that becomes very, very a very good method of transfer of, of those diseases. And we always say that um, farmers should not just uh, allow everybody into their farms. Because you hear even um, people who have just come to visit you, they, have not come, they are not visitors to your chickens. They are your visitors. So you hold them, uh, you entertain them in your living room, and then you finish your business and go. But not they are finished. Uh, they say, oh, I heard even you have chicken. You take them into your chicken. They have not washed their hands, their boots. You don't know where they are. So you invite them and you invite around them diseases that they come with on their crows or, or things like that. And we always say <clears throat> that the best way to make sure that your farm is, uh, you get rid of all these diseases is by ensuring very tight biosecurity measures. By biosecurity measures, we mean nothing in, nothing out. Meaning you have uh, food birds at the gate, yes? Meaning you must have a gate so that people do not come through the fence into your farm and start engaging with your chicken. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a, a foot bath where people with, for vehicles, if it's a big farm, even where vehicles, they are, they, the wheels can get into the disinfected water. And then people dip their boots. Once they come in, they wash their hands and change their clothes. In fact, in some very no-nonsense farms, people even bathe before they get into the into the chicken houses because mm -hmm. they are not taking chances. So if you are not willing to follow the protocols that are laid down, then you can just watch from, uh, from the side what is happening inside. But if you must get in, then you wash uh, your body, then you are given special clothes to that farm that are clean and disinfected. You just uh, go and see what you want to see, then you come out and change into your street clothes and, and leave. So, that is usually very good, but for those farmers who may not even afford that, then a, a clean dust coat would be enough with gumboots, which visitors can come and change at the point where they want to get in your house. So they disinfect, they change, disinfect, get into the, into the chicken house, disinfect again and change on their way out. Meaning, if there are substances that are, are from outside, they disinfect and leave them in the water bath if they are going in. Once they get in on their way out, they disinfect again, meaning they do not take anything in, they do not take anything out. What we call nothing in, nothing, nothing out principle. Okay. Yes. What, in terms of uh, mortality rate, how bad is it? Uh, for, for salmonellosis, the mortality rate could be somewhere around uh, 40 to 50 percent, but the, mo the morbidity rate could be higher, meaning that uh, many could be affected but the deaths are not as much. Mm -hmm. So if you are to arrange the four diseases we, we, we've talked about, then Newcastle becomes the first one. Then we have uh, coccidiosis, then salmonellosis, and finally, fallpox, because the deaths from fallpox are very few. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of disposal, is it the same? Uh, for disposal, uh, mm -hmm. the chicks then uh, because they die and they, they may be many and they live in a very closed environment, then you need to make sure that uh, you bury or you, you, you can incinerate in a closed furnace, as, as we had mentioned for the others. And then you make sure that your hands are clean. And whoever is handling chicken, I mean chicks, we always advise that they be the same one person. And if uh, it is the same person handling even the growers and the rears or the broilers, mm -hmm. you start from the young ones to the old ones. 
like that. Okay. And again, if there are any sick uh, birds in your farm, you start from the healthy ones, and then you finish with the, with the ones that are sick. And of course, finally, you, you make sure that after attending to each group, you wash your hands, and you disinfect your boots before you get into the other house. Oh, OK. Yes. So as we wind up, um, what are some of the lessons that farmers need to um, really follow? Or, or a regulation that farmers really need to follow in their farms to avoid all these problems? Because uh, paying a vet, uh, all that is, uh, uh, it's into your, into your bottom line at the end of the day. So farmers, um, they should just be very careful, I would say. One, mm. they know what diseases affect their poultry. And we always say that there are usually trainings for people who want to get into poultry farms or start a poultry farm. There are shows, they can always get tuned to KT and Farmers TV. They'll, they'll get information. They can go to the internet and still access the same information. But hygiene becomes very critical mm -hmm. for, for any of them. And number two, uh, food buds becomes a, a must-have requirement in the farms just to make sure that they are not taking chances even with friends coming in to visit and, and, and people like that and rusty but not the least in fact is the, the 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 one that they should be very careful of they make sure that vaccination protocols <coughs> are followed up to date and once they do that vaccination is good because you just spend a small amount of money to acquire the vaccine and your chicken are vaccinated for a particular period of time as compared to the hassle of uh, getting a vet, the losses due to deaths or drop in production, you know, it's, it's a cheaper route towards preventing diseases or maintaining a farm than going to attend to try and uncover a disease that is already in the farm. Okay. That, that, that's usually expensive. Yes. Okay. I know you always uh, tell us that prevention is better than treatment. Yes. Um, and I totally agree with all what you've said. Uh, I hope uh, viewers and, and even farmers who have been watching us have learned a lot, especially when it comes to treating and managing, managing and treating uh, poultry diseases. Um, and for that, that is the end of uh, today's conversation on AgriTalk. Um, until next time, goodbye. Farming in Kenya has been perceived as an occupation for the older generation, posing challenges which include food insecurity, as most of these farmers approach retirement. Lately, 